Hey everyone, Lisa Salvatore here with a mid-month check-in as we get on towards the end of August, leading up to another full moon in Aquarius and also Uranus retrograde. So today is August 14th that I'm recording this video. And in my last video, I talked about a lot of the Iranian energy and the Aquarian energy that we had going on. And this is basically a continuation of that. And time has just been going super fast. And it just seems like the days are rolling one into the other. And sometimes it's hard to digest what's happening, what's coming, what's going. So there's a lot. So let's just dive right into it. Mercury has been in Leo. When in Leo, he's hot, he's fast, he's furious, he's feisty. He communicates sometimes in a um, very direct manner, but it can also sometimes be Ooh, I don't want to use the word rude, but it could just be cutthroat because it Mercury doesn't care when he's in Leo. He's just he's got to get out what he's got to get out, no matter how angry it may make somebody else. It just doesn't matter. It needs to get out. When Mercury goes into Virgo, Mercury loves to be in Virgo. It is his natural place. Mercury rules Virgo and Gemini. But in Virgo, Mercury's in his rulership. He loves to be there. And Mercury is all about communication. It is how we communicate on a one to one basis. It's how we perceive information It is the way that we think. It's the way that we take in what is going on around us, outside of us. And it's our intelligence. This is all ruled by Mercury. And so when Mercury goes into Virgo, his natural place, it's like this communication becomes much more factual. It becomes much more analytical. It becomes that much more direct and concrete. And there aren't as many blurred lines when Mercury is in Virgo. So that is a good thing as we're moving on through August, we're getting closer and closer to Virgo season, coming off of a lot of fire energy, of a lot of Leo energy, moving up into Virgo, which is Earth. And we've definitely got a lot of Aquarian air energy. And with Uranus so present as it's been since the last full moon, which was also in Aquarius. So we had two full moons, one on July 23rd in Aquarius at one degree of Aquarius, which is a critical degree, meaning it's very important. It brings a lot in and it brings a lot to light. And it kind of starts a story for us, both personally and collectively. So think back to that last full moon on July 23rd, around that time, what was going on for you? What was revealed to you? Uh, what were you shown tolls that would you feel? What did you hear? Could be just something internal. It doesn't have to be some big aha moment, but it certainly could be that as well. Just from working with a lot of people, I'm sent seeing that a lot of people are actually going through big life changes right now that they did not think they would be making at this point. That's Uranus at work. That's like, you know, got to break through, got to break out to break through, right? So the reason, well, not the reason, but a reason that we are feeling this impact and this influence of the Uranian shakeup energy and the breakthroughs that are coming in and the downloads that are coming in is let's not forget that the theme of 2021, the energy that we are under so strongly, so tightly is a Saturn Uranus square. Remember squares are friction. They produce an integration of energy that is difficult to bring up in the highest form and fashion. But the ultimate end game is to work this out and it brings in tremendous growth through the challenge of integrating this energy. So Saturn is in Aquarius and Uranus is in Taurus, both fixed signs. Aquarius is fixed air. Taurus is fixed earth. They both stick to their positions. They both want to duke it out and have their way. Uranus wants to break us free and shake us out. And Saturn in Aquarius is like, well, you got, you can't break too many rules. You have to do this the right way. Let me think about this. You know, what's the higher order? What's the higher intelligence? What does this look like for the world? What does this look like for humanity? So there's this tension. Now remember Saturn squaring Uranus, it's going to happen by the end of the year, four times it will hit exact. So it's the energy that we are under all of 2021, which is why it feels very intense and very ch changeable in an instant. And we'll be under the Saturn Uranus square into 2022, not as tightly as we are in 2021, but we'll get to that in another video. He's about to station retrograde and join the other retrograde planets, the outer planets that are all retrogrades. So we've got Saturn retrograde in Aquarius, Jupiter retrograde in Aquarius. We've got Uran uh, Neptune retrograde and Pluto all retrograde. And now Uranus is about to join the party here on August uh, 19th or 20th, depending on where you live, right before the full moon in Aquarius, which is also ruled by Uranus. So again, here we've got this element of Uranian energy all month long, which is basically like a wild card. And, you know, Uranus at 14 degrees of Taurus right now, moving very, very slowly and getting ready to reverse its direction and go retrograde. 
as we've talked about before, when a planet is getting ready to station in whichever direction it is, it slows down and it's almost like it's blaring down on us and the, the um, what's the word? The genres, the, the uh, God, I have, I'm like at a loss for words today. The um, function of that planet is heightened. The energies of that planet are pronounced, are heightened. So think about it this way. Uranus is the God of the sky. He rules the weather. He rules lightning. Think about all of the weather disruptions that we have seen across the globe the past couple of weeks between the hurricanes, the floods, tornadoes, um, fires that have been going on. Now, now, in some cases, earthquakes, volcanoes, that can be, that can be emotional. Uh, granted, we're seeing it play out on the world stage in a lot of ways, but this could also be disruption of an emotional nature. It can be an internal process as well, and most likely is, depending on where Taurus is in your own birth chart, okay? You wanna look at where Taurus is in your own birth chart. Uranus is at 14 degrees of Taurus. So you also wanna look at any other points or planets at 14 to 15 degrees of any of the fixed signs, not just Taurus. So you wanna look at where you've got, if, you, if and where you have those numbers, 14, 15 degrees, of Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, or Aquarius, because those are our fixed signs and they are kind of getting pummeled by this energy right now. And when I say pummeled, it's just with this feeling of like a chomping at the bit, needing to make a change in that area of your life, of your chart. So you may wanna look to your chart to see what's going on or how you could be feeling it. So for example, if this is in your workhouse, you're gonna be feeling like, I need to get out of this job, I need to change this, I need to shake it up, shake it loose because Uranus always wants to break us down to break us through, remember that. And oftentimes it is through a disruptive force and things can come in from the outside to sweep that up and out for you, or it can be more of an internal process where you just have to make these changes. If it's in your relationship house, you know, you're gonna be feeling like the need to break free from certain relationships in your life, from restrictions, whether real or perceived. Um, if it's in the house of communication, you're gonna have a desire to communicate your truth at any cost, at, at, with any expression. So these are all ways to look at this Uranian energy. And yes, a lot of times it can feel very disruptive, but it also comes in to clear a path. It does not have to be destructive or disruptive. It certainly can be more, like I said, of an emotional aggravation that comes in. But bottom line is the Uranian buzz is present all of August as we are feeling that planet about to station and go retrograde. And again, I'm gonna emphasize what's going on with the weather. The other thing I wanna mention about Uranus is that it rules Aquarius. And we've got Saturn and Jupiter both retrograde right now in Aquarius. Aquarius is the sign of science. It is the sign of technology. It is the sign of innovation, groups, group consciousness, the collective coming together um, in a different way and all for a united cause. So think about how we've had two full moons now in Aquarius. We had the one on July 23rd, and now we have another one coming up on August 22nd with all this stuff going on in between. Um, there's a lot of differences in opinion, both personally, professionally, collectively. There's a lot going on, okay? So it's important and wise to use the retrogrades to go inward, because remember, these are the outer planets, which means they're further away from us. Jupiter and Saturn being social planets that basically kind of dictate to us what's going on on a larger scale, right? And how we can expand and our beliefs and our faith and change the system. So this is about digesting, going inward and digesting all that's gone on the past three, four, five, six months, both collectively and personally to sit with that and see where, when, and how you can make changes that need to be made. So if you use this energy constructively, it can feel really, really positive. You can get a lot accomplished. Um, and again, Uranus rules the higher mind. It's the God mind, it's the flashes of genius. Mercury rules the lower mind. Mercury is the way we communicate. It's very basic. It's how we, you know, it's our intelligence. It's how we deal with one-on-one. -on -one. Where Uranus is more like, you know, you get that flash, that intuition. and so. Also, Uranus is working with the full moon energy because like I said, Uranus rules Aquarius and Aqu this is an Aquarius full moon coming up on August 22nd, 8.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to have a the second full moon in Aquarius and this one is at 29 degrees and 57 minutes, I believe. 
Um, and so we had one degree, which was the last new moon. Now we've got 29 degrees, which is this next full moon. So what does that mean? 29 degrees of any sign is always, uh, it's referred to as an anoretic degree. So basically that means it's critical in a way. It's, 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 it's very potent. It's very heightened. The energies of that planet, that sign are very pronounced. And so because it's Aquarius, because we are seeing a lot being revealed, because it's a full moon, which is all about things coming up to be illuminated, to be revealed, because it's the sign that rules over the collective consciousness and the people and how we come together for a larger cause, how we unite. It's also, you know, Aquarius is technology. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of positive stuff here. And this full moon is also conjuncting Jupiter, the great benefic who's retrograde, okay, in Aquarius. So there's this element of tremendous, there's a tremendous capability for expansion of all kinds when you stick to your truth and when you stay in your light and when you stay in a higher vibration. And so staying in a higher vibration these days is not that easy, as we all know, because of everything that's going on outside of us. Definitely not that easy, but it's worth it to try because it does help to make this energy feel a lot less tense, intense. Can't always control, obviously, things that, well, we can't control the weather, clearly, but we can control how we react to certain things. And because of all of this wild card energy, it's important to remain flexible. It's important to remember that things do and can change and very quickly at that. It's important to do things to take care of yourself and stay in your center, which a lot of times are very obvious things that because of the constant, you know, hamster wheel of the three dimensional world, we forget to do, even though we know we need to do it. Um, it's all of these things right now. So are being highlighted ways in which we need to bring ourselves up. I do feel like this is a positive time for relationships again, for people coming together, uh, like-minded people. Again, Aquarius is the internet. So even if you can't do it in person, there's something to be said about going online, finding support groups for whatever it is that you may be going through, um, you know, finding groups of people with a similar interest to you. It's important to do that to stay connected right now because it is quite possible with everything going on. Again, you know, who knows? We may have power outages. We may have internet going down for a couple of days. Who knows? It's quite possible. And that's the beauty of astrology. It, it doesn't give you like, this is absolutely going to happen, but it does give you the energy of what could happen. And so being prepared or even just being more flexible is never a bad thing. And the other part of that is we all as cheesy as this may sound or as woo woo as this may sound, we are all here for a reason right now. We all signed up to be here. So when you think about the craziness that is going on outside, also maybe inside, just think that, you know, there's a higher order to all of this and that you will be okay. We will be okay. It's just a lot of times, like in true Uranus fashion, things have to break down so that we can have breakthroughs. Now, back to this full moon, um, in Aquarius on August 22nd at the 29th degree. That also means the shadow side of Aquarius can come up. And so what's the shadow side of Aquarian energy? It can be cold, it can be detached, it can be aloof, and it can almost be robotic. And so when you think about the, the opposite sign of Leo, which a full moon is when the sun and the moon are opposing each other, the opposite sign of Aquarius is Leo. And Leo is all about the heart and it's all about staying in your truth and your light and your courage and your love and your warmth and your vibrancy. So when we've got this nice polarity between the two. So it's important to try to focus more on the Leo side right now when it comes to your human interactions. Because remember, Aquarius is also, um, it is the internet, it is science, right? And we're definitely seeing a lot going on with Jupiter retrograde and Saturn. Um, with the science, right? Things being revised, things being put out, uh, things are changing. So again, it's all laid out for us. There's a lot to be said for this time, uh, how much has been going on. And, you know, I really do believe, I really do feel that it is all for a bigger and better purpose. We just have to get through it. And that is the hardest part because it definitely feels challenging right now. Definitely. I usually don't have a hard time staying in my center. And I have to tell you, like the last two or three weeks have been freaking hard. You know, I have fixed, I'm a fixed sign. So I am feeling this. Um, the fixed signs are really feeling this energy. We all are. But if you're Taurus, uh, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, especially, 
or if you've got like any of your major planets in those signs or at the 14th, 15th degree, you're, we're feeling it guys. Like this is just, you know, and in a lot of ways it's good, but it's like, oh, like this shake up, shake up, shake up, you know, something's got to give. And that's what Uranus is all about. It breaks tension. So keep that in mind. Just keep your head down, keep doing your work, take care of yourself. You know, things will lift. There are days that are brighter than others. That's just the way it goes, right? Another thing about this full moon that I feel is really cool is that Mercury and Mars, both now in Virgo at the time of the full moon, making a conjunction, are also going to be trining Uranus in Taurus. And Uranus is the ruler of this full moon. So what does that mean? Again, remember, Mercury is the lower mind. Uranus is the higher mind, the God mind. So this means psychic awareness. This means flashes of brilliance, flashes of genius, flashes of insight, ideas coming in from higher realms, other realms, spirit connection, um, you know, being more innovative than ever and not even knowing where it's coming from. It's just like this surge of powerful communicative energy that is wanting to come in to help to move us forward and to help to take us higher. That's a beautiful thing. This, you know, I love, I, I shouldn't jinx anything, but I personally love Uranian energy because it's unpredictable, which can sometimes be scary, but at the same time, you need, we need a little bit of that to get us through. And Uranus and Taurus, you know, remember, Taurus is also a sign that doesn't love change and Uranus is all about change. So Uranus is like, I'm coming in, I'm breaking things up, I'm breaking things through. And Taurus is like, no, I'm holding on tightly because I don't want to change, even though I know it, this needs to change. So there's something to be said about this whole like push pull of needing change, wanting change on all scales and levels, but then like something's holding back and then Uranus just comes in and does it for you. And I think that that's a good thing because a lot of times we need that shakeup to push us forward in specific ways. Um, also, Taurus is the sign of, you know, food supply, agriculture. And I wanted to mention that Uranus in Taurus is actually squaring uh, Ceres, the great mother, the earth mother, who's all about agriculture, harvest, grains. It's a square. So let's think for a moment about how we keep on hearing about shortages within the food supply having to do with, it could be, you know, um, because of weather, droughts, things of that nature, or it could be because of the travel factor right now that's coming up with some issues that things can't get to certain places because of weather, because of shortages of drivers, because of COVID, whatever the case may be. So it's probably a good time. And I'm always a big supporter and promoter of eating locally, but it's probably a really good time to get to your locals, your local farmer's market, find out where other ones are, um, just so you have other alternatives, just in case you can't get to the store or just in case you can't get a delivery due to just a shortage of staff for a couple of days. You know, it's just good to have these, these little spurts of awareness here that help us to just stay a little bit ahead of the game. Again, doesn't mean anything's happening. It doesn't mean there's going to be a shortage. It just simply means you're taking preventative measures and taking care of, and, and then you're doing something good for yourself and for the planet, right? By eating locally, by supporting your local farmers. They need it right now more than ever um, due to everything that is going on. So just remember, there's a lot of good right now un underneath all of this tension that we are seeing being played out on the world stage. Uh, lots being revealed. Again, remember full moons, full moons bring things up. They illuminate what's been hidden, what's been dark, the light gets shined in on there and things come up and out and clear. So around this full moon energy, around this Aquarian second full moon, look to where you want to expand, look to where you want to make some really big changes, where you want to grow, focus in on that and everything else will just fall into place. Um, I know I focused a lot on Uranus. I feel like I've been thinking and talking about it a lot the past couple of videos, but I mean, he is present. Let's just get a card for, for, this, for the second half of August. I'm using my sacred Destiny Oracle deck. Oops, one jumped out, so I'm gonna take that one. Oh, how funny. <laughs> change. Uranus is all about change. Um, and, you know, I'm going to go with, because there's a lot of cards in this deck and some of them are not so pretty. Some of them look very disruptive. I'm trying to see if I can find one. Anyway, this one's pretty. This is, look at this, little horsey on the merry-go-round, I think. Yeah, or whatever that is, a hot air balloon. Um, it's just showing us that change is imminent. 
Everything is changing. The world is changing. We are changing. We are not meant to stay in the same spot. I had a wonderful conversation today with a friend who's been kind of down on herself for a decision that she made to end a relationship. And, you know, even though it needed to be done, and I was explaining to her that give yourself the credit, think about the good times and think about what led you there and think about all that you learned in that relationship and release it lovingly because it, you keep focusing on the, the ending and the negativity that you feel by ending it. But you're not, you're, you're skipping all the steps in between all the time spent in that relationship and all that you learned from it and that the time has come to end it and changes, you know, imminent, right? Like it, everything changes. So I don't know. I'm focusing on the positive because this does look like a very pretty card. I love the back of these cards too. The sun will rise. The sun will shine. Things will continue to go on. The merry-go-round keeps going, right? Um, you can get, you know, well, I'm not going to say you can get off at any point, but you know, just Stay well, take care of yourself. I'll be back with another video. Happy full moon. Bye guys.